Hello and welcome to Kentucky Football's 2022 Offensive Scheme Review. I am your guide on this journey, SEC Stat Cat, Clark Brooks. So in this video, we're going to have three words that help sum up Rich Scangarolo's approach, the year-over-year -year changes he tried to institute, the first down offense, the third down offense, and getting nitty-gritty drawing up this offense's core run and pass staples. When summing up this offense with three words, you definitely could have gone many different directions. But the first word that inevitably came to my mind was intricate. With Rich Scangarello being a former Kyle Shanahan assistant, schemey things coming along with him from the pros to Lexington was basically... Uh, <laughs> part of the territory. So with that, you know, Mark Stoops the last several years has just been very dedicated to try and have a less deliberate approach offensively and much more marriage between the run and the pass. Speaking to that, only Tennessee had a higher first down play action rate than the Wildcats in meaningful minutes in the SEC this year. So meaningful minutes being up or down 18 points on the scoreboard trying to exclude garbage time snaps. So on the most common down, when UK was trying to establish the run, they definitely had a marriage and a complimentary aspect to that. You know, you know, there were plenty of examples of this offense setting up a look a month before they ran the counter to it. So, you know, definitely clever, sometimes up its own ass. Don't get me wrong, but ultimately very, very full of a lot of looks. Speaking to that, UK was the only SEC offense this past year in meaningful minutes to dedicate less than 6% play share to its most repped concept. And looking at things through the air, it was even more spread out. Vanderbilt was the only other SEC offense to only average over a target per game on three drop back pass concepts. That should just tell you how much there was a lot of different looks, how there was a lot asked of these receivers and young players to learn multiple concepts and designs on a week to week basis. And as we saw, the results were not so great, but more on that later. Into the intricacies, the next thing that comes to mind is motion heavy. In terms of pre-snap motion, just, you know, realigning a guy before the snap, whether on one side of the formation or just moving him down inside or whatever, backfield out wide, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do that. About 20% of UK snaps utilize that. That came sixth highest in the SEC. But the thing where they hang their hat on is the jet motion usage. Over 25% of UK snaps in meaningful minutes use jet motion. And the majority of them were shoot Escort motion. So jet motion just being flat eye candy, not necessarily doing anything except drawing attention from the defense. Shoot motion is at snap motion, but you're then using that player as a functional blocker. UK used that on split zones, on counters, on tosses. Looking at the entire SEC, UK used 20% of the conference's shoot motion. LSU was the only other offense with a double digit share, and they had a clip around 13%. So UK on a class of its own using shoot motion. Now, the final word, unfortunately, I kind of hinted at it earlier, ineffective. UK was the number one overall offense in terms of success rate in 2021. They dropped down to sixth this past season because of the following factors. Having a bottom four havoc rate allowed having a bottom four negative play rate allowed, having the worst rush yards before contact average, having the worst sack rate in the SEC, the only clip in the double digits. And as you can imagine on a down-to-down -down basis, how those things soured UK's um, macro approach, there's no wonder they also finished bottom five in points per game, points per drive, points per play, first down, rate per play, and as well as scoring drive rate. Ineffective. Outside of those shoot motions and having a very, very balanced script, Rich Scangarello also had his fingerprints on UK shifting its run game from a zone-based one to a gap scheme run. So over the last three years, UK averaged a 61% zone run share. This past season, that dropped below 46%. I mean, think of how things were in 2020 when basically 60% of UK's runs in general were just inside zone reads. A massive shift in philosophy. And with that shift in philosophy, either it was because of the new teaching style, the new voices in the room, or the fact that there were a lot of fresh faces up front, UK's returns, running zone looks plummeted. 
Overall, not one single zone look finished with a success rate over 50%. Major concern. Even though in meaningful minutes, inside zone splits did see those returns. Overall, not so much. I mean, we're talking about foundational looks of this offense just completely biffing it. But another aspect to shifting to the gap teams, at least those did show heightened returns. Around half of them worked and uh, a fairly okay explosive run rate as well. Speaking to the hard-nosed approach that usually comes with gap schemes, the uh, another element that was pretty obvious from the get-go with Scangrillo was instituting true I formations. On true I formations, UK came out in 8.5% of snaps this year. It was by far the SEC high. They almost practically doubled by volume uh, the next two teams in line. Texas A&M with 36 reps and Auburn with 32 reps. So only six passes out of these things. So definitely a run heavy type of approach. It did help UK's down to down success rate a little bit, but look, no one's going to come out in the eye formation and expect to gain 10 yards per carry every time. It's definitely a uh, uh, aim small, miss small, get those five yards through a cloud of dust and, you know, try and play the time of possession game or impose your will on defenses. As after mentioned, UK's first down approach was all about establishing the run and then using play action passes to complement them once the defense was peaking towards the backfield. So only a 33% pass rate on first down in our meaningful minute sample. That is awfully low, folks. Um, you know, last year it was around 50% or so. Definite emphasis to establish the run. And looking at the concepts themselves, you know, there's no shockers based on our overall shares. Power, counter, inside zone split, inside zone slam read, power read, toss, and outside off tackles made up six of the most rep concepts in these situations. The only pass pattern to generate over a dozen targets in our sample was play action bootlegs. And it's awfully concerning. A sub- 40% success rate on these easy weak side flood actions to space that you would like to think would be accentuated by UK's run heavy approach. All in all, UK only had two looks among these to see over a 50% success rate. And it's a big, big reason why UK was the SEC's least successful first down offense this year. A 40% success rate overall. Obviously, that is a major, major factor. You have more biff first downs. You have longer second and longs. That increases your degree of difficulty to then convert or set yourself up for third down. A do or die situation, which you do not want to find yourself in if you're an offense over and over again to sustain drives. Now, the best third down offense is an offense that can avoid third down the best. That was not the Wildcats. No SEC offense had a higher makeup of their total yards come on the money down than the Wildcats, around 24%. And the other side of the coin, in terms of efficiency, UK was dead last in third down success rate. So they couldn't go out and execute. And like a lot of other aspects with this offense, there was plenty of balance and a lot of desperation. 11 checkdowns. That was more than anyone else in the SEC. 11 true screens, you know, three or four different looks combining for 11 targets, nine quarterback sneaks. What a trooper. Looking at the top six pass patterns on the down, I mean, only two targets separated the first from the sixth most featured look. So this is like cross, all curls, trails, China variations. For the most part, as you can imagine, with this West Coast approach, Yak oriented designs to put the onus on the wide receiver to convert after the catch as opposed to just go beyond the sticks and make a completion and get the conversion that way. So all in all, yeah, you don't like the results. The execution was not particularly too great and the early down offense didn't particularly help things, setting up only an average amount of advantageous situations. Now it's time to draw up some of UK's run staples. I'm not going to be able to explore every nook and cranny within this offense. We're only going to focus on the main looks that were either repped the most or brought about the most efficiency. So let's get going with their lead gap scheme looks. As Kentucky transitioned from an inside zone based run game to one with more gap schemes, ultimately power finished near the top of the script. So here is a rep from 12 personnel of the 
40 reps in our meaningful minutes. 30 had at least two tight ends on the field here. So um, ultimately, half of these reps worked, which is what you liked, even though it wasn't necessarily too potent, with a 4.9 yards per attempt and roughly a 16% explosive run rate. But here's an explosive carry from Chris Rodriguez. So um, drawing this thing back up, again, it's going to be a fantastic job from our tight ends. They're both going to have down blocks, secure the edge. We're going to have a double team on our front side interior, working towards our backside linebacker. The all-important down block to secure our gap with our backside guard wrapper coming around and engaging the first thing outside the mess, and then occupying our edge there. So... It's going to result in one of the best tackle breakers in the SEC the last several years facing up with a cornerback. That is an offensive um, positive mismatch there. So in general, corners are not as sound as tacklers as their teammates. And when you get them in open space, you really can accentuate that shortcoming. So we'll watch it play out here, but you'll see how our tight ends win the edge, allow our puller to be matched up with our linebacker, and it all works out as designed. So down blocks away to secure. Fast forward a little bit. You can see how they swing the gate. That is then secured. Double team works up to the second level with our backside still being secured. Wrapping around our guard to then take on our linebacker with only this corner being the last line of defense for Chris Rodriguez, who then stiffly stiff arms him and gets an explosive carry. So we'll watch it again from behind. But yes, just watch the swinging gate from this 12 personnel set completely help optimize that one-on-one -on -one block in space and how we have all that room to work with one-on-one -on -one and make that man miss, which he ultimately does. Here is another rep, this time from the I formation. Again, roughly 8% of UK snaps came from the I formation this past season. And even though it wasn't necessarily good returns, this was a pretty impressive rep for a 16 yard gain. So power itself, you know, it was featured 29 snaps overall ahead of UK's bye week. And even though both the Tennessee and Missouri games totaled five reps each and saw a 50% success rate, you know, following the bye, it was ultimately faded from this offense. Here, we're going to have our fullback be our trapper. He is going to set a hard edge. And like our previous example, we're going to have a backside guard wrapper. Everyone else, 3Ds, down blocks, divergence, or double teams. Uh, basically, it's all going to be down blocks on this play because um, how the defense is aligned here, a little bit of a mug pressure look. So we have to take um, basically everyone lined up in a gap and we have to make sure we don't get any penetration that could doom this play with a puller. So down block, down block. Down block, down block for our puller, and then we have two hinges on the back side. So, like our previous rep, it's going to work out nicely where we get a good kick out, and our backside guard puller is going to be isolated in space with a backer to spring our ball carrier. So, we'll watch it play out. Seal there, kick out, puller going up in space. Real good job from our wide receiver to get his jersey dirty a little bit and to drive his man off the ball. And it's about, you know, <laughs> Almost 10 yards before contact as Chris Rodriguez swings his body past the pylon into the end zone there. Counter. So this had a high usage early in the season before Chris Rodriguez was ingrained into things. Basically, 42% of this concept reps were in the Florida and Youngstown State game. So like its brother concept power, only seven explosive carries for roughly a 16% explosive run rate on the year. A little lesser returns in terms of success rate with a clip around 48%, but a slightly better yards per carry. But um, much more active than um, power 11 at snap motion reps with power 41 with counter. So all in all, it had 45 snaps. More than likely than not, one of these tight ends were going to be in motion in this shoot or escort type of fashion. So unlike other jet motion that basically just sends them out as eye candy or sometimes going out on a route wheeling up the sideline, here you're getting a full head of steam before being a functional blocker. You know, you're just adding another gap towards the other side of center. So here, like 
on counter, you're going to have on this particular design, F counter. So he is going to be your trapper. He is going to be your wrapper lead blocker. On a normal form of counter, you would have your backside guard be your trapper and your tight end be your wrapper lead blocker. UK also did that on occasion, but here was a rather unique look that I wanted to draw up because it got an explosive carry in a very meaningful game, in a meaningful part of the ball game. I mean, UK is down three here, trying to get some points. So shoot motion across the formation. You'll see um, our lineman here, double team to down block, double team to down block and kick out, trying to work backwards on these linebackers leaving this fellow for our wrapper and this fellow for our trapper. So really nice job to root out this edge as he is keeping hard integrity with that C gap. He is closing hard, attacking the right shoulder of our right tackle. And yet we still seal him out, make sure he is secured. Fullback then engaged with our other linebacker out block and that safety that was aligned pre-snap in the box. He bumps out to the outside, doing us a favor and helping us create a crease. So once he then comes out, he comes back in. He's caught flat-footed and Smoke does what he does best, hit the edge and run into space. So all in all, counter a little bit more inconsistent, but it had a little bit more juice due to the variety and the fact that it used at-snap motions more than the counterpart power. Okay, here's a more traditional conventional form of counter with our backside guard trapper and our tight end wrapper. Unfortunately, this is not going to be a teach tape rep by any means. So like our previous example, it's going to use at snap motion again, 41 of the 45 counters used at snap motion, but this is just traditional jet fly motion coming straight across the formation for eye candy. This is not shoot motion where we're being used as a functional blocker on this play. So he is going away from the run action, trying to draw the defense's attention this way before smacking them with two um, additional pullers, gap being replaced. So this is a tight front, really tough ask from some of our linemen due to the assignments involved. But since it is an odd front, you still like how it does uh, match up with gap schemes like counter. So Backside, we're just trying to secure edge, down blocks, down block, trying to hinge here. But you can see that's an awful long way to go to try and secure that uh, backside A gap. And you'll see this is an example of the defense getting penetration and almost dooming this play. But it is a very nice hedge up job from our tight end wrapper to engage that penetration, at least seal it, and give our back a chance at making something happen. Even though we are kind of outnumbered on this backside here due to the stunt, it still works out great because of our fantastic ball carrier. So we'll watch it play out. Jet motion entices the, safe, the, the collapsing safety, leaving this guy a little bit more isolated, assuming the run's going to go that direction. It ultimately does not. But you can see our center, you would think with this nose going away he would be able to pass it off on these fellows because ultimately still it would be a two versus two matchup but he gets occupied and we lose our numbers advantage so three versus two we have to spend and that then brings that linebacker straight through our a gap again because that is just so much distance for our right tackle to try and hinge away he's a beat slow he turns his head that then allows the other person he should have been preoccupied with blocking to come through clean. But you'll see heads up play by Dingle to at least ward him off. And Chris puts his foot in the ground to redirect and try and make something happen. Even though, yes, we it's not necessarily a good idea to hit the backside of where pullers are working away from, considering that's where the collapsing safety is and this untouched edge is there to make the play. But again, he was one of the best ball carriers in the SEC for a reason, folks. So it's rather curious why the inside zone slam reads efficiency plummeted off a cliff the very season Rich Scangarello came around. 
for practically the last five years, it had been the foundational run look for this offense and generated fairly good returns. But when not using at snap motion this past season, it was just absolutely horrific. I mean, in our meaningful minutes sample alone, a sub 26% success rate. That is just awful, awful, awful. But like I mentioned, some at snap motions, particularly jet motion, help buoy things. Roughly a 47% success rate and 9.1 yards per carry on the snap. So help winding the defense a little bit, help getting a little bit more extra eye candy as opposed to them honing in on what's happening between the tackles. So here, even though uh, Will Levis was not so much of a designed keeper this past season, this still has a read element. Edge defender is left untouched like our normal zone, but how the jet motion kind of allows our offensive line to have a matchup advantage, it helps springs the big gainer. So... What do I mean by that? So our play side tight end is still going to work away. Everyone's working towards the left, zone left. But tight end's going to work down, have our combo here. And then the next level they're supposed to work up to is that linebacker. So with this combo, the next available person on the next level is going to be a corner. You usually don't get that type of advantage, having a center block a corner in space. And on the other front side, this is going to be a man on a man here. So we're basically going to hit our divergence here in the middle. Chris is going to squeak through, break a tackle, and since we get our hat on a hat, we're going to have an explosive carry. All in all, six explosive carries across the 41 reps on the season. So you'll see that coordinated action from the line, everyone working the same way, edge is untouched. You know, he keeps his head, he keeps his integrity towards his gap, so easy decision to hand off. Again, not that Levis was really looking to uh, be much of a design runner this past season. So, head on a hat on the front side. And our combos are working here to where we can hit that crease inside. And even though it's not particularly the cleanest rep, it is still very, very nice from our tight end to keep working with that edge and eventually be a barrier between him and the ball carrier, allowing Chris to hit that hole. So, even though, yeah, you don't like that one yard or zero yards before contact, but you got to love the effort from UK's ball carrier and how this look did have a little bit better returns when using at snap motions. Here's the most productive rep of the slam read on the season, and it occurred when UK was outnumbered. That's right. So you can see here drawn up, no one is going to be able to account for this play side middle linebacker. But, um, again, it's going to be another great forceful run from Chris Rodriguez and accumulating yak on the way towards the end zone. So, like I mentioned in the other video, heightened returns when using jet motion on this concept while 26% overall in meaningful minutes when using at snap motion regardless of when it was run 47% success rate. So, much, much better. So, this is going to pull the safety towards the middle of the field, but like I mentioned, we're not going to have necessarily great numbers in the box. So drawing this up, how UK will block this, you're going to have your left tackle on that edge. You're going to have a combo towards that guy. You're going to have a combo towards that guy, and you're going to have your tight end left on that edge with this linebacker being your read man. And again, this linebacker is going to be unaccounted for. Um, it's going to be basically a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Chris's job ultimately to make him miss as he does. So we'll watch it play out. Everyone in a coordination coordinated fashion, working away, eyes up, reading the edge, keeps his integrity, easy decision to hand it off. The jet motion doesn't necessarily widen the defense whatsoever. It was a fairly good replacement rotation by them. Interior beats our combo play side. So you'll see our center is unable to reach that man, and since he's unable to reach that man, that becomes our hard edge, and we have to then cut back that way. So with that, we at least get a wash down from our right side of the formation on towards the second level. Our tight end does engage, but like I mentioned, this linebacker is unaccounted for, and he snakes with an opportunity to make a tackle for a loss. He does not. Chris keeps his legs churning, and he keeps hitting the original hole with him washed down and everyone else occupied 
front side. So ultimately, not necessarily an explosive rep and definitely one of the biggest shortcomings on the stat sheet within this offense's most featured concepts. But it's nice to see that the bell cow could still operate its inside zone on occasion. inside zone split so unlike normal zones that send everybody going on a coordinated path the same direction split flows have an offset tight end or fullback fire against the grain and create a hard edge the theory being if your play side zone flow is stuffed and someone gets penetration forcing a cutback lane you at least could have a new hole form if there's a wash down with that kick out to go in between those guys. So this is a same side split zone. So the majority of UK split zones came, you know, uh, well, um, under center, pistol, but they also dabbled with same side look. So unlike bluff reads or split zone reads, for instance, if the running back was on this side of the formation, going this way allows the quarterback to keep an open gate while reading the defense on a potential keep aspect around the edge. This dictates we're going north and south. No cross mesh whatsoever. Very much more up and down like you see on some duo dives or gap schemes like that. So we're still going to have our fire against the grain. He's going to engage this edge, and then it's just normal zone combos towards the left. So comboing this up, our left tackle is going to be on our edge. They're going to combo up this way. They're going to combo up this way. Tight end's going to come on out, and that, again, leaves our edge for that um, that split flow block there as we get north and south. So all in all, you know, it wasn't necessarily too crazy in this offense. Only four explosive carries. Um, yeah, roughly 10%, one out of 10, nothing crazy. Like I mentioned, 19 with at snap motion, but particularly from 12 or 13 personnel sets. So two or three tight ends. We have one, two on this play. And looking from the I formation specifically, he had 12. So um, it did peak after the Tennessee game, only three reps the rest of the season. So it was definitely faded to close the year, um, despite the fact that you saw inside zone slam reads increase in usage, despite being a sister concept inside zone look itself. So again, we can see how it, it's developing play side. You can see how that guy's coming against the grain on that edge to kick him out and be a hard edge setter. But it's ultimately going to be because of this kick out, our seal and climb here. That's going to give us the crease we need to hit north and south and fight through the carnage for a decent gain. So, yes, it wasn't too flashy, wasn't too spectacular, but a 52% success rate was definitely one of the more consistent looks within this offense. Here's jet motion being paired with the inside zone split, an explosive carry that gives us a little bit of breathing room. So, um, 19 snaps with at snap motion, but you know, a sub 40% success rate, lowered returns overall compared to, you know, the 52% that we saw in our meaningful minute sample. But, uh, nonetheless, it was an interesting compliment within this offense. So we'll talk about the design itself here in a second, but I wanted to at least talk a little bit because this play series will not get its own video. Um, what I did the split counter. So split counter and inside zone split are very much complements on the split counter. Unlike our zone flow, for instance, if you know we're doing a zone towards the left, we're going to have hard edges set trying to trap and seal the defense inside, then using either a shoot motioner or someone coming flat against the grain of the zone flow like you would see on a split counter from a stationary position be a kick out block and hit that cutback. So even though on zones that alley is used as a you know a break break glass in case of emergency type of avenue on that play it plays off the defense's aggressiveness trying to stop that zone and using it against them. 
I just wanted to mention that before we move forward. Um, all in all, 38% on split counters this season, despite seeing equal usage year over year, a drop in efficiency. So anyway, back to inside zone split. So like I mentioned on our previous rep, everyone is working our zone combo this way. We have a split floor. Um, creating a hard edge, and we're trying to work our fr front side zone. So um, jet motion being featured on this rep, not something that hel helped, like I mentioned, but we'll draw it up. Combo towards this guy, combo towards this guy, hat, hat, split flow. This man is unaccounted for. That is not what you usually like to see, but you know it is a goal line situation where the defense is a little bit more aggressive in terms of loading up the box, but we'll let you play out. We basically get a wash and a wash, but um, since this guy peeks in the hole, it's not going to be a good decision to continue on our normal zone flow. McLean puts his foot in the ground, and we get our cutback alley like we usually like. So it's not going to be that split flow one. You know, if we get the wash down and hit that alley, what it's going to be is a, a seal down and a seal down, and we're going to hit this alley just one more gap inside there so um a root out a drive down an engagement and we hit right there since our front side zone stuff is a little too messy to hit so a little yak but an explosive carry nonetheless from the inside zone split or split flow look Power with a read element saw increased usage after the bye week. I mentioned earlier, non-read and under center powers saw decreased play share after that time. So it didn't necessarily go away. It was just featured in different ways. So yes, Levis was not necessarily a major run threat this year, but running this from the gun at least made the defense have to keep him honest on occasion in terms of gap integrity. Our edge here, you know, he, he's not going to fire inside. He at least has to stay true to where he's the area he's supposed to cover, which kind of takes him out of the play and allows us to reposition our gaps with pullers. So this is going to be a fantastic job from our four-man surface here. Even though it's going to be a four-on-three block, how they're able just to push these two back into both of these linebackers' laps, they're both going to be lost and none of them can make the play. So this guy is going to have a, a outside fill. He has an opportunity to make the play. Watch this front side combo here from our tackle and tight end. Just absolutely fantastic. Driving them all the way back, turning him sideways. You got to like that. So um, drawing this up, tight ends down here. This is out of 12 personnel wing set. Trying to work that way. Not eventually. And then down block, down block, hinge. And even though this guy squeezes it, he still has outside leverage meaning yes don't force it will just give it to our great ball carrier so we blow them off the ball and like i mentioned linebacker spills he's technically in the correct position same with this linebacker but they just over pursue and since we just put our butts between our guy and our ball carrier it creates a very nice crease and our guy is able to get daylight for an explosive gain. So all in all, it very much works the same way. It's just when you have that little bit of an extra read aspect, sometimes a little bit extra cushion manifested for the ball carriers to do damage. Power RPO bubble of the 29 power reads 12 were with RPOs, most of them being these bubble outlets like this. So this is our conflict defender in the flat, but we can tell how this is drawn up. We love how the numbers work out for us on offense. Basically, it's going to be a hat on a hat situation, and if we can do that, it can spring a good carry. It's not going to be the cleanest rep, but still it's going to result in a 10-plus yarder. So front side, we're going to have our down block, on block, double team working towards this linebacker, down block to negate penetration with our puller, and a backside hinge. Our puller is going to work outside of that mess and try and engage this linebacker. And again, if we get a hat on a hat, it should be golden. But our tight end doesn't necessarily win the edge. He's going to have an opportunity to make a play at the line of scrimmage, but we're able to just keep working towards the perimeter. And eventually, because of how everyone else gets their landmarks, we're able to get a 
pretty good carry here. So we'll watch it play out. Eyes up, reading our defender. He, he's coming out, and he's in fairly decent position if we wanted to hit the edge anyways. Edge is there, but everyone else is down blocks. Basically get to their landmarks, and we do not see any penetration that would doom the play. Really good hinge on the backside. We'll rewind it just a second. See how this combo block is sealing before working towards our linebacker. And we'll see how our tight end cannot keep that edge here. See, ah, he just gets outside of us. But we still do work on our other blocks as our backside guard puller does get to his landmark. And because of that, we're able to at least get to a decent amount of grass once we make that edge miss. Remember, that's our tight end. Unable to seal that edge. Make him miss and get north and south. Toss was highly centralized towards the first five games of the season. Of the 25 tosses seen across the season, 17 were in those games. Highly featured against Ole Miss, but here is the lone explosive carry seen against Florida. So like counter, shoot motion, at snap motion, highly featured with this look. Of the 25 tosses, 23 had shoot motion. So again, that is functional jet motion. You're giving positive inertia and adding an additional gap towards the other side of center before the defense can react. So we're also going to see pin pull action on the front side. So these two guys on the outside are going to bl down block, seal those two in guys towards the interior our play side tackle is going to come around and pick up the mess additionally again with that shoot motion as well so center is going to get up to the second level right away and we're going to get a seal there and a seal there from our other backside blockers so with this working out um this corner is actually going to go inside and originally our shoot motion guy is going to bypass him. He has an opportunity still to make a play behind the line of scrimmage, but Smoke does what he does best and attacks green grass. So um, with him passing up that corner, he then can continue to work and he eventually gazes, engages with a safety. So ideally, yeah, you would kind of maybe want to see him bend back and block him, but still you got to like the idea that he had his eyes up and was looking to engage downfield after the fact. So... Here's our front side pin. Here's our front side full pull. Gonna pick up this linebacker you know, with the safety or with the center working up to him. And him coming around. It's gonna be a very nice escort for the lone explosive carry on shoot toss action from this offense. So all in all, yeah, inconsistency definitely waned after the first five games or so of this season. Those first 17 reps generated a 46% success rate, but in our meaningful minutes sample, tosses generated a success rate below 40%. So yeah, you do the math. Uh, definitely heightened terms of usage and efficiency early on, but couldn't necessarily maintain that. Power Toss Reed was only seen 12 times this season from UK's offense, 10 in our meaningful minute sample, but it still wound up as this offense's most successful run look. So, uh, like the inverted power veer or the power read by some terms terminology, you're having that backside guard, trapper, and a read man towards the same side. So, unlike most read options that send the running back and the quarterback on opposite sides of the center. Here on the inverted veer, we're both attacking the same side, but the quarterback will be the dive player and the running back will attack the edge, unlike what you normally see on some read options. So um, backside guard trappers taking care of that edge. This guy is our read defender. We're trying to make him wrong. Is he going to come to try and respect the quarterback's 
north-south run ability, or is he going to widen and give up an inside alley? So here he does look a little bit towards the inside, and our tight end is able to arc up on that safety, and we get a fairly good gain. All in all in the year, three explosive carries across the 12 reps. Nine reps occurred after the bye week with the Georgia gang being the most featured. So down block, down block, down block. Whoops, sorry. Get him on that edge and really then create a whole lot of space for our back to do work, assuming he gets the ball. We'll let it play out. You can see Reed Defender comes inside, and even though this guy is getting upfield, we're about to trap him. He's not going to be any difference on that play. One-on-one -on -one toward the top of the screen as our tight end arcs on our safety. And with that, boom, we get a big gainer for Chris Rodriguez. Now it's time to take to the skies and look at UK's core pass concept. So like the runs, we're only going to be focusing on the reps that UK targeted the most or the ones that brought about the most efficiency in our sample. So with all due respect to things like vertical shots, all curls, sails, and a few other concepts, I am only focusing on things that drew at least 11 targets in our Meaningful Minute sample. So let's get going with UK's lead look stick variations. Stick variations were this offense's most featured drop back concept. It was seen across five patterns with at least five snaps or more. The most featured variety was shock. Shock being the terminology for inverted stick. So you still see your number three man, your innermost receiver, be that stick person either sitting up on a quick hitch in a zone void or fighting for outside leverage against some types of man coverage. But instead of number one getting vertical, he becomes the quick outlet towards space. And number two then is the vertical stressor. So again, on a normal form of stick, you know, you would see like a flat route with a vert combo, Raider stick or double stick where two people are doing that inside to outside leverage read. And then you have from condensed set, so forget this guy was over here. He was over here in this instance. You would have stick swap in my terminology. And then the final one, usually also out of tight formations, stout or stick outs. Almost like that dual stick, but you don't have anybody on the vertical stressor. It's much more of a quick yardage type of spacing type of concept, sideline to sideline. But either way, H shock. So against two deep zones, uh, stick is meant to pick on the underneath uh, linebackers here. Because if you're going to have two quick routes, in theory, if this is cover four, this guy's over here, this guy's over here. Well, naturally, you're going to find a little hole here or at least move them out of position and if this corner is indeed bailing back respecting verticality well boom like you're going to see on this rep all we have to do is throw a hitch to space so again it's a pre-snap type of concept it's nothing too crazy stick it's just really unfortunate this offense came in with a 3.1 yards per attempt and a sub 40 percent success rate in meaningful minutes for its lead pass concept. So 64 snaps on the season, uh, around 41 targets, 31 or 38 in our sample, but still not necessarily something that generated a lot of easy gains when it was supposed to. After the various stick patterns, Featuring a deep or intermediate cross came next. Considering cross, play action boots, Yankee shots, the next three concepts in line all featured that type of route. But here, the weak side flood variation cross. So why is it a weak side flood? We are sending the majority of our routes away from the strength of the formation. And why is it a flood? Again, we are trying to overload areas of the defensive 
coverage. So here is a variety using jet motion. A lot of these plays in this offense have used jet motion. In addition to power play action, we're pulling our guard, really trying to entice these linebackers to come up and run fill. So fairly interesting release from our two-man flood pattern. So uh, we're having an outside release, but we're still doing an under-over cross. And even though, you know, it's only going to be like a seven to eight yard depth of target, you can see how this is indeed a cross pattern. So paired with a backside dig, if the theory being, if this safety came down and over rotated and this corner who had deep third responsibility has outside leverage, hooking up towards inside leverage should result in a pitch and catch opportunity. But this is a rep where because of where we are in terms of our release and these linebackers giving us enough space to just do a quick pitch and catch opportunity, that does not come into play. Again, at the top of the screen, we just have a vertical stressor to keep them honest or to additionally create more room for the cross to operate in the middle of the field. So of the 27 targeted cross concepts, 16 used play action. All in all, this was seen on 41 snaps. So play action definitely helped uh, pad a little bit of the numbers. You can see eye candy moves the defense over and play fakes entice them up as we have a dig and a cross. Going to be a lot of room to work with here. You know, outside leverage and the safety again. Being honest of that vertical stretcher. So just boom, little dump off pass and then we're able to get some yards after the catch. Here's another explosive example of cross pattern. So we're going to centralize it towards our 12 personnel wing formation. We're going to complement it with a play side vertical as well as a C corner to facilitate the flood flow. So um, this is just going to be another example of throwing hot and going to be a catch and run opportunity. You know, our other tight end is going to be kind of jammed and thrown off his route, but because how he kind of deviates attention away from our crosser, it's going to be a really easy situation for Levis to get him the ball. Like our other example, power play action, pulling a guard to entice the linebackers to bite up and then just throw over top of their heads. Power play action cross. You know, the New England Patriots made a killing off of this for many, many years. So it's nothing overly complicated, but it's still very, very effective. I mean, look at that. Look at all that gravity that Chris Rodriguez gets <laughs> for us to play with in the passing game. So um, all in all, this concept saw a few different forms, you know, whether it was this slot form, you know, the, for instance, if this guy was over here, the bubble, the previous example we saw, or the slice concept, again, if we had them over here, or Ohio concept, whichever your terminology is. But, you know, either to the formation, away from the formation, just having that deep under over cross pattern was okay for this offense. Of course, you would like something a little bit better than something around a 40% success rate like it generated for us, but a 9.1 yards per attempt all in all is fairly decent, even if only three patterns generated a pass beyond 20 yards. As promised, here's the next form of weak side flood that finished among UK's most targeted pass patterns. Play action bootleg. So we're getting the whole defense to think run one way, and then we're sending all of our routes the other way, hopefully along a three-man stack read outside the numbers while our quarterback is on the move. So with Levis' health kind of questionable this past year, it makes a little bit of sense why UK was only able to generate a 30% success rate. But still, based on how Pop Warner teams are able to execute play-action boots, it is rather concerning how very few of them found success. So this was the first snap of the season, and besides this rep, only one other one went for a gain over 20 yards. To, truth be told, on this bench combo in particular, it did help set up a deep double move later in the year for an explosive, but still, all in all, play-action boots 
by themselves, nothing too crazy. All in all, in terms of the designs, like I mentioned, they were commonly paired with smashes. So you have the bench concept, a corner and a quick out, traditional smash, corner and a hitch, inversions, flat route and a C corner. So stuff like that, you know, just really simple patterns that really facilitate that high low when the quarterback is on the move, either left or right. You know, right-handed quarterbacks usually makes a lot of sense. The run to the left, but you'll see here how the defense is completely fooled with this left-handed boot, that there's a lot of room for our, our a quirk outbreaker to obviously make the most of this target. So we'll get set here. Tail as old as time. Get the defense to flow one way and throw where they are not. So we're getting our twig as our hot route down the sideline. Inside release for our corner. Kind of faking run flow, and then we're going to snap it off from our quick outbreaker with our intermediate crosser rounding out our flood pattern so once we get outside the numbers boom he's right in our line of sight no need to overthink it we get a pitch and catch easy explosive gain so it is a shame that uh play action boots in general did not bring about better results but you know you could blame Levis's health or just the overall you know inconsistency of this offense but moving forward i bet that is rectified So these go by a number of names. Um, even in my charting system, based on the variety, it can be called certain things. But all in all, Yankee shots are vertical shot plays with an intermediate cross and a vertical route pairing. Based on how that vertical pairing breaks determines how it's categorized. So if it's an overtop post with that deep over, that is Yankee. Of course, obviously, unlike hiccups, for instance, you'll see that terminology. It could be a post corner. For me, that doesn't necessarily matter. It's all about is there going to be an overtop read or a read outside the numbers. So Portland concept, similar, deep dig, and then you have shot put, deep cross, vertical, or like I said, you know, deep outbreaker. So all in all, those looks combined for 20 targets from this off or 20 snaps for 18 targets from this offense this year for four explosives. Ironically, it was the most successful of these past concepts to feature that intermediate cross in its design. Four most successful look overall from this offense in our meaningful minute. So this is a look where you usually don't see your crosser snaking through the formation. Really fun design, but all in all, this is going to be a really nice deep post completion. So we're using split zone play action, like I said. Coordinated flow from the lineman except for one guy firing against the grain for our hard edge. It entices this safety up. And this, since this safety is eyeing this crosser, he's going to follow him across the field. And since this guy's just kind of hanging out and this corner has outside leverage, that's going to result in a major one-on-one -on -one gaff for Florida deep. So um, ideally, you would maybe want this safety to not necessarily lock on that cross and just gain depth to potentially cap that route. In theory, passing that off. But you'll see how the defense doesn't necessarily react to this all that well. Play action entices our guy up. We get inside leverage. You can see him snaking through the formation. It gets the attention of not only one, but two deep safeties. Again, there they are. As our deep post wins his inside leverage and goes up and grabs it. Not too shabby for a true freshman. Here is it again from another angle. You can just see how our other safety leaves his depth in favor to cut off that route. And in doing so with him playing outside leverage, there's just no one else left to take away this completion. So here's the Portland concept that was seen on seven snaps of those seven Four featured at snap motion like we see here. So jet motion and power play action. We've seen a few other examples how it can just entice box defenders looking towards the backfield. And we're just going to try and throw in the void over top. So the theory being this is going to result to cover three for our defense. One, two, three deep defenders. Four underneath. We're going to throw over top of those four defenders. And with our deep dig 
an over top post combo, we're going to make our middle of the field safety wrong. If he fades back to take away our post, well, we're just going to throw that dig underneath. But if he squats on that dig, then we're going to throw that post because this guy with outside leverage is vulnerable to our deep middle of the field type of pass. So here it is, just really simple type of idea if you can get the time to block. A lot of people peeking towards the backfield and it basically just a two-man a two-man route combo. It, but even though it's three defenders, you can still make them wrong just because of the aggressiveness of the play that they have to respect. Boom. So here is Hiccup, that corner post type of action with our deep cross. So it's the same idea like we talked about. We're just trying to manipulate too deep to single high. And then once we get single high, make our middle of the field safety wrong. So play action. We'll pull our defender down, creating this guy towards the middle of the field. And this corner post hiccup will get him looking towards the outside. And then once we get him on our backs, we win our leverage and we get an explosive gain. So I mentioned in our play action boot video that UK's favorite play action boot kind of pattern set up an explosive. This was that explosive. Came in a pretty good time huh, when they needed it in the fourth quarter down multiple scores against Georgia. Even though it still resulted in a loss, valiant effort. So we get Levis outside the pocket. You get safety one. And this deep third defender occupied on our crosser. And we just get a really speed receiver mashed up with a safety in space. And with him you know, looking towards the outside, respecting his... Playmaking skills, whether inside or out, we get him on our back. And like I said, we out leverage him for a big gainer that really did help provide a spark for this offense when he needed it. Again, Yankee shots combined, no matter what the variety was, for a 53% success rate, which is definitely one of the more higher ones within this offense this past season in meaningful minutes. So smash variations showed up in a number of ways within this offense, but the most popular one was this corners concept or inverted smash. Some consider this bench swap, but basically you're getting your inside man attacking the flat and a C corner from your outside receiver to facilitate that high low. Again, the traditional form of smash is an inside corner and an outside hitch. You also have the bench concept, which we talked about on the play action bootleg pattern. Um, but all in all, yeah, these corners and whatever under routes we did help signify what concept it was, but fairly featured in a number of ways. So this underneath pattern, it's gonna have a little bit of a switch element and it's gonna confuse the defense and it's gonna result in a wide open deep completion. So. Crucial third down. It's going to be a blitz from Mississippi State with a single high safety, man-on-man -man coverage. But because we have this kind of inversion in our break, both of our defenders are going to be hung up a bit on the flat, and it's going to result in a wide open deep completion. So um, this is the only explosive smash across its 14 targets this season. 30 featured snaps. Four sacks on the flip side. So um, all in all, when it only has a 25% success rate, you know that smashes generally were not the most consistent look within this offense. And that's saying something. So we'll watch it play out with a little bit of a yo-yo motion. Out and return. Resettling. He's going out, just trying to confuse who gets who on the defensive end because it is a man-on-man -man assignment. But you'll see right there has both of these guys kind of have their eyes peeking towards the flat as our guy is racing all by vertically. Same thing on the other side of the formation. So it prevents the deep middle of the field safety from playing either side. And since this is towards the boundary, you know, he favors a little bit more towards the field just in case, you know, it's the most vulnerable side of the formation, but you can see there's our safety, there's our corner, there's our flat defender. Woohoo! Wide open catch that basically sealed the game.
China variations were a signifying Scangarello staple through the air. They showed up plenty when behind the chains or on third downs, but against Youngstown State and Vanderbilt, they were the most productive, i.e. UK's least talented secondaries that they faced. So all in all, seven of the 20 featured snaps were of the slot China variety. So let's talk about what is a China route. So China is just a short multi-breaker back towards the middle of the field. You can hear these called whip routes, but it is a direct, you know, complement to what we talked about earlier with the corners concept. Inverted smash, the only difference being we're acting like we're going to the flat and then just whipping back towards the middle of the field. It was commonly paired with the pivot concept, which is fairly similar to the pivot concept. So on a pivot concept, It would look like that, but piv in, it's somewhat of a trail. So you buy a little time, let him influence on the dig, and then trail underneath of it. So fairly, you know, uh, arduous pass pattern. It's one thing to hold up for four or five seconds when you're aiming deep downfield. It's another thing when you're trying to set up a four to five yard completion. So um, again, all in all, it was a fairly consistent look, but... The high end was not there. Only one explosive target across its 14 logged on the season. So we'll watch it play out. Motioned our man over. It looks like we're going to get a form of cover one robber. Robber defender. One, two, three, four. Matched up with our running back. He's going to be matched up with our piven. Matched up with our corner. And one on one down here with a single high. So... With him locked up with Tavion Robinson and a lot of space on that side of the formation, you'll see instantly how he kind of races towards the outside. Inside release, like I said, playing off of the idea of that corners concept, whipping, and then there's a lot of room back towards the middle of the field to work with for a nice chunk completion there. So when you have good route runners and you're playing against vulnerable secondaries, it can work. It's just generally speaking, on third downs, I prefer to aim past the sticks. Here is another example of the China concept. This time we're going to target our outbreaker. So this swung the complexion of the Missouri game, a very clutch completion on third down. In my interpretation, it's going to be against cover two man against Missouri. We're going to have man on man here, man on man here. One, two deep safeties, five rushers, and it looks like this linebacker who's playing the delay is locked up on that tight end. So you'll see, even though we this concept is somewhat designed to be a man beater with that multi-breaking type of route, how this corner at the top of the screen loses his outside leverage and how this safety is slow to cap our route, we're able to get our outbreaker for a very, very clutch completion. So dig on the back side just to keep our safety somewhat in place but again i think it's just more of how this corner loses his leverage makes the difference on this play more than anything so like our last rep we're trying to play off the corners concept an inside whip with our c corner breaking off the other way so on a normal china it would be like a quick in in a corner but since it's h china you're just swapping it around and you'd use that whip route to facilitate the swap. So again, right here, you can tell right away with our corner being on the inside and us going out, that's where we're going to go with the ball. Not the best placement in the world. You see, we have to kind of turn around, but still Dan Key makes the man miss and he makes the most of his opportunity. So all in all, 63% success rate. Again, that is the highest among UK's core pass concepts or any pass concepts really that generated at least a 1.2% play share in meaningful minutes. The pivot and dag concepts were sprinkled in from this offense. You know, 15 snaps total this season, 11 targets in our meaningful minutes, but still rounded out the most featured pass looks in our sample here. Not going to like a 36% success rate, nor am I going to like a 4.1 yards per attempt, nor am I going to like only one explosive target, but still, here we are. So it's a versatile pass concept, dag is. Um, it's just a quick out. In a deep dig, the pivot concept is basically the exact same thing, except we're just getting a little bit of a multi-breaker pivot 
in addition to that deep uh, dig. You know, naturally good against two deep shells. Whether it was cover four, you know, where you're working right towards the middle of the field, pulling out hook curl defenders from the passing lane. But here is an example of it beating cover three. So I already talked about the China concept, you know, that whip corner or the quick in corner pairing in this offense. But um, Dag and Pivot featured in a number of different looks. Pivot had six snaps, all of them different pass patterns. Dag had nine snaps and basically four or five different patterns. So a lot of different ways to dress it up, but when it was targeted, really left plenty to be desired. But here against cover three, one, two, three deep defenders, one, two, three, four underneath defenders. Um, manipulating these underneath guys are crucial because with so many of them and this end breaker going towards the middle of the field, they easily can undercut this, but this is going to be a strike from Levis. So middle of the field safety, he's going to be very conservative. He is not going to drive on this dig again with this deep third defender having outside leverage. He's just keeping everything in front of him. And so it just has a natural vulnerability to an end breaker because he assumes maybe one of these guys can be underneath and take it away. But with our multi-breaker China, drawing the attention of a few of our underneath linebackers. It just gets a beat that we need so we can get our strike towards the middle of the field. A linebacker almost makes the play, but you'll see he's just a beat slow. Again, there's our quick out to pull him out of the way. Little whip to get their attention, but this guy's just a beat slow from breaking on that in breaker. Again, very impressive throw against pressure. Let's not forget that part of the play. But fumble at the end of the play almost negates a rather good rep from the DAG concept. True screens were roughly featured on 6% of UK's meaningful minute snaps. Over half of them were of the Convoy jailbreak variety. So by volume, 21, it would have been this offense's third most targeted pass pattern in meaningful minutes. So like a lot of screens, rate of returns, not so great. Only roughly a 38% success rate, even though the yards per attempt, 8.1, was fairly okay large in part to this rep. So UK in the past has had some wrinkles of where the running back is the main jailbreaker or the blocker out of the point of attack. Typically speaking, it's going to be a tackle just because you usually like tackles blocking corners in space. So um, this is an interesting wrinkle. Think Florida a couple of years ago, smoke lighting that guy up. I think it was actually run to this side, but that remains... Um, it's going to be a great rep from Brown. So you can't really see because of the this angle, but we'll flip it around and show it off from another perspective here in a second. But there is a safety well off the ball, and he is assigned our man. So the other guy near the vicinity is that nickelback, and like I talked about, our running back is going to kick him out. Um, and unlike other jailbreak screens, the majority of our line is basically going to stay in and block. Left tackle stays in, center stays in, and both guys on the right side are tackle or tight end is the only person that sneaks up. But our right guard or right, left guard is going to go right up to that linebacker and engage him. So um, this is third and short. We're mostly just concerned about moving the chains here in this situation. But boy, do we get an explosive game that almost makes the difference in this ball game. So again, there's our tight end working up. There is our left guard. Here is our running back. And we're assuming if this safety um, comes down and maybe we cut up that alley space and just his own man potentially will take him out of the play. So we get past the chains, we make a guy miss, we put on the jets and we get a big gainer. So we'll see it again from behind the center view. Here's that safety I was talking about a little too far away. Running back will kick him out. Left guard will take him. Tight end, basically everyone else staying in to block. And with that kick out, he has a long distance to come to try and rally. And we're just using the natural space and cutting up inside. And even though he almost has a chance to make the play, he does not. And Brown shows off why he was a freshman All-American. 
So there you have it. There were some of Scangarello's staples that helped sour this UK approach statistically year over year. No, again, some clever ideas. It's just execution down to down, week to week. It just was not there. It was not up to the standard that Mark Stoops wanted. Of course, he went out and brought back his old play caller, Liam Combs. So we are in the offseason, but still, because we have a good amount of data at secstatcat.com, you can become a little bit more informed and remind yourself just how UK like to operate with him in charge. You can see UK's scripts to see drive-by-drive -drive breakdown of what concept was being called, what play was being called. And then you can go to the concept page and see the efficiencies across the entire offense and then compare them to other SEC teams as well as break down each individual statistics with are advanced metrics, you know, depth adjusted accuracy, average depth of target, explosive pass rate, and a lot of other fun stuff at secstatcat.com. Of course, I would also like to invite you to smash a follow on my Twitter feed at at sec underscore statcat and this YouTube channel at sec statcat. So until next time, I am Clark Brooks reminding you all to have a good one.